my name is Sarah and today I'm sharing my recommendations for not another love story. So once again I'm jumping in on the monthly recommendations group which was started by Trina from Between Chapters and Kayla Rain. I will link the information for both of their channels and the Goodreads group in the description below if you want to check that out. Every single month we choose a topic and share our recommendations on it and in the month of February instead of sharing our favorite love stories we are sharing our favorite non-love stories. Once again, I am really bad at narrowing this kind of thing down. So today I have 10 recommendations for you, six standalones and four series that focus not so much on the romantic side of things, but on all of the other wonderful aspects of life. Up first, The Art of Racing in the Rain by Garth Stein. I read this book in October of 2015 and absolutely loved it. It was one of my favorite reads of the year. The book is narrated by a dog named Enzo and as Enzo comes to the end of his life, he recounts the story of his life and therefore the life of his owner, Denny, and the things that Denny and his family have experienced over the course of time that Enzo has spent with them. It is a beautiful story, so wonderfully written. The metaphors and themes and stuff about life and relationships in this book are just exquisite and since it is narrated by a dog. There's really not much romance in this at all. Up next, Where'd You Go Bernadette by Maria Semple. I read this, I believe it was in 2014, possibly 2013, but this book follows the story of 15-year-old Bee and her mother Bernadette. When Bee wins a trip for her family to go to Antarctica, Bernadette throws herself into preparations, becomes completely overwhelmed, is on the verge of a breakdown, and then disappears. As a result, Bee must search through emails and various documents and conversations in order to figure out where her mother went. It is a beautiful story about family dynamics, mother-daughter relationships, and because of how it is told, it is just a really unique story, super fun, great character development, wonderful, wonderful story. Up next, Station Eleven by Emily St. John Mandel. It is an adult dystopian sort of speculative fiction novel that primarily centers around a flu pandemic that wipes out 99% of the world's population. It is told from multiple points of view and in a non-linear format, and it is a beautiful, wonderful, fantastic story. I already did a full review for this, which I will link in the description below if you want to hear more of my rather gushing thoughts about it. But suffice to say, this story is fantastic. I loved everything about it. Up next, The Help by Catherine Stockett. This book was kind of a big deal a few years ago when the movie adaptation with Emma Stone came out. It is a historical fiction novel that takes place primarily in Jackson, Mississippi in 1962 and follows three different characters, Abilene and Minnie, who are both black maids who are living in the Jackson, Mississippi area, and Skeeter, who is the white daughter of a prominent Southern family. Skeeter has just returned to college with a degree, but to her mother's lament, no husband. When she arrives home, she learns that the beloved maid she has grown up with, Constantine, has inexplicably disappeared. Skeeter, Minnie, and Abilene join together in a project that could alter all of their lives as they set forth to write a tell-all book about what it is like to be a black maid in Jackson, Mississippi. It is a beautifully written story with strong character development, wonderful themes, and I highly, highly recommend you check this one out if you haven't already. Up next, All the Light We Cannot See by Anthony Doerr. This is another historical fiction novel that takes place primarily in France and Germany during World War II and in the years leading up to it. We follow two main characters, Marie Leray, who is a blind girl living in the French town of St. Malo, and Werner, who is a German Nazi soldier. As St. Malo is taken under siege, Werner and Marie Leray's stories converge in an absolutely beautifully written, wonderful, moving story that won Doer the Pulitzer Prize in 2015. And my final standalone recommendation is The Westing Game by Ellen Raskin. I read The Westing Game for the first time when I was in elementary school and absolutely fell in love with it. One day, 16 different seemingly unconnected people are called to the mansion of recently deceased Samuel Double Westing for the reading of his will. Much to everyone's surprise, Westing has chosen a virtual stranger and possibly a murderer to inherit his vast fortune, but one thing is for sure, he's going out with a bang. It is a super fun, fascinating story that is very intriguing and mysterious, all sorts of fantastic character development, and I just loved everything about it when I read it in elementary school and in the numerous rereads that I have had since. So those are my standalone recommendations for you guys today. And now I'm going to talk about four different series that while most of them do feature romance of some kind in them, the main focus of the series as a whole is not about romance, but rather on different themes and relationships and such. 
Up first, The Marta's Legacy Duology by Francine Rivers. It follows five different generations of women in one family and shows how the dynamics of the various relationships like mother to daughter and mother to grandmother occur from generation to generation. It is a beautiful story about familial love, mother-daughter love, reconciliation, and so many other wonderful things. So if you are a fan of Christian fiction and especially if you are a fan of Francine Rivers and have not read this duology yet, I highly recommend you check it out. Up next, the Time Quintet by Madeline Lengel. If you've been watching my channel for any amount of time, then this should come as no surprise considering that A Wrinkle of Time is one of my all-time favorite books. The Full Quintet is a series of five companion novels, so you don't necessarily need to read the first one to read the third one, etc. But the story as a whole follows the Murray family and their children and the adventures that they have. It is a middle grade a magical realism sort of fantasy type series that is just wonderful and delightful and so fantastic and I just, I love everything about it. Up next, another one that should come as no surprise, and that is the Anne of Green Gables series by L.M. Montgomery. I am currently in the middle of a reread of the Anne of Green Gables series, and as I've mentioned many times before, Anne is my favorite character in all of literature, and I love everything about her and her story. If you are familiar with the Anne of Green Gables series or have heard people talk about it at all, you know that Anne and Gilbert are a couple in the series, and obviously their romance does play out throughout the course of the story, but the series as a whole, especially the first two books and the last two books and even some of the middle books, is not about their romance specifically as much as it is just about them living their lives and happening to fall in love through the course of living their lives together. And it's just a wonderful story. They're both fantastic characters. All of the characters in the story are just wonderful and I just adore everything about this series. And my final series recommendation for you guys today is The Chronicles of Narnia by C.S. Lewis. This is a seven book series that is obviously well known, well loved by many children, adults, and everyone in between over the last several decades. My personal favorites in the series are The Lion, Witch, and the Wardrobe, The Voyage of the Dawn Treader, and The Last Battle, but all of the stories are wonderful. Lewis's writing is fantastic and just magical and so, so amazing to experience. If you have never read The Chronicles of Narnia before, I highly recommend reading them in publication order, not in chronological order. So start with The Lion, The Witch, and The Wardrobe before you read any of the other books. I don't know publication order off the top of my head, but I will put it in the description below and you can also google it if you are so inclined but most of the box sets that you will get are in chronological order not in publication order and as a slight bonus because i'm terrible at narrowing down recommendations i'm going to give you four more recommendations that i talked about in my what you should read in 2016 recommendations video so i'm just going to give you the titles those books are peace like a river by life anger the strange and beautiful sorrows of ava lavender by leslie walton the book thief by marcus zusak and the phantom toll booth by norton jester well, there you have it, friends. Those are my recommendations for stories that are not too romance-heavy for you to read this February. If you have read any of these books or series, I would love to hear your thoughts, so please let me know in the comments. Hello, friends. My name is Sarah, and today we're taking... And I'm jumping in on the month... The information from... Grown up with Constantine has inexplicably is has inexplicably it has it was primarily in France and Germany in uh, and as a slight bonus as and as a oh.